Hey, it's it's Mitch Connor um, with uh, Swix, and uh, I've been doing uh, the ski tuning uh, for quite some time here, uh, especially uh, with Sundance Ski Shop, but throughout all the stores in, in Alberta and clubs, and um, have the privilege of working with some fairly high-end athletes and uh, with uh, Alpine and Nordic. This is what I want to see for your average tuning setup. Naturally, it's not something that you buy all at once, but you want to accumulate to the point where you've got a mobile table. When I start to uh, work on my skis, what I like to do, I break it into two segments. Uh, one is uh, sharpening the ski and, and preparing the ski for wax. So for that, I'm gonna have my tools, my hard tools, which is gonna be a file. I got a true bar here, a file clamp, my uh, side file guide, my base file guide, my file cleaner. I always use a pair of protective gloves I've got a side edge cutter, so that removes uh, the protective foil on the side of the ski. And I've got a, a prep brush, so this is a World Cup steel brush uh, to prep the ski before we do any uh, waxing. I also want to show how I, uh, buying a nice expensive iron is one thing, and it really is great, but you really want to make sure you protect your irons. This iron has got an iron cover, and you can put a warm iron in there without uh, damaging the membrane inside and then you've got this nice wax holder there this this one is um i would say that's almost 20 years old now a lot of this equipment that i have is quite old and that's a neat thing about it when you buy something from us because it's such good quality it does last a long time you don't have to buy it again and again and again but i do encourage you to buy once so that means that you buy the better product rather than having to go back and buy it again and again. So, so that's the big thing. The work surface that I have is one that I can put pressure down on. So in other words, I'm not trying to tune my ski up here. I've always got uh, a visual looking down at my ski, and I've also got a, a position where I can actually put pressure on the ski. You want to also have a, a fixation device that, that you can uh, easily put the ski in. And the idea here, this is a World Cup vice from Swix. It, it will accept uh, skis up to a little over 80 millimeters. So it's quite a good vice. It's not the best for the free ride skis. You need something a little bit wider, which we, we also have. And then we also, we have uh, uh, articulated end pieces here. So we can actually tilt these if need be. And I, I, I'm pretty traditional. I just do it straight up and down. A lot of things that I do are gonna be pretty simple. And then after that, I'm, I'll, you'll see how all this works. But I do want to address one thing. When, uh, when you, you'll see me take the straps off this ski, but we really do want a, a nice uh, pair of ski straps that will go on the contact point of the ski. So it's another piece of equipment that's actually uh, preventative uh, for damaging your edges. So you always want to have two of these at least. Some, I know some racers will put uh, one under the middle of the ski too. So, so these are very, very important. And I like the rubber ones versus the foam ones because this doesn't harbor moisture. Starting off my uh, first uh, tuning of the season, I'm gonna take my skis like I always do. And the big first thing is I'm gonna take an elastic band and I wanna pull that brake up out of the way so a lot of these elastic bands that aren't strong enough will, won't bring the brake above the top sheet and that's really what our ultimate goal is, to bring the brake above the top sheet so we can work on it. Next I'm going to take the ski and I'm going to just turn it upright. Uh, we want to take a ski from the, the conception when you buy them uh, and try to make this ski faster. So everything I'm going to do right now is to prep the, prep the base edge first and then the side edge second, and then finish off with some good stoning. As I'm working on my skis, I'm gonna look at the base first. I wanna address a couple things. I'm gonna look to see whether or not the base is concave or convex. More layman terms, I, I refer to it as being a rail, meaning that the, the edges might be higher than the base itself, or I would look at it in a way that if the, if the the PTEX itself was a little bit uh, higher than the edges, uh, which is optimum. You want to, this is where it's buyer beware. These skis that come from Fisher are 0 0.5 on the base and they're 87 or three degrees on the sidewall. So knowing that, that's, that's the position where I want to start. To really dumb it down, the center of this base is going to be slightly higher than the edges. So just slightly higher. And for that, 
you attain a nice pivot point, but it's not so high up that you can't get good edging. So it's very, very important. The key thing for addressing this, and what I really want to make sure is that I'm not in a situation where my edges are higher than the base. That's my primary concern. And looking at a relatively flat ski is really important. So as I'm running down what's called a true bar, I do a couple of things. I listen, and if I don't hear any steel, that's a good sign. And I also visually look, and if I don't see any light in the middle of the base, that's also a good sign. With just a little bit of light on the edges, that shows me that I have a really nice platform to stand on while I'm skiing. And right there, I just felt a little burr right there. So I know I'm going to have to take that off. So these are little things that I can, I can work on. So ultimately, this is a really nice ski to start with. And I want to make sure I'm going to keep it that way for, my, for the whole season. So I'm going to keep it in perfect shape. And that way, you're not spending a lot of time working on your skis. There's a protective um, tail to, to all the skis. Naturally, it's on the tail of the ski. In this case, it's a really high grade rubber or TPU. It's a very uh, dense plastic. There's a couple of things I like to make sure that this is not burred up or chipped up. I wanna make sure this is always nice and smooth. And you'll see at the very end of my preparation, I'm gonna do a little sanding here just to make sure that it's nice and smooth and there's no drag whatsoever there. So knowing now that I've got a, a, a ski that's set at the 0 0.5 or the factory spec, they're a, a well handmade ski, so I, I know that. And I, I identify that visually. So I'm in a good position, good to go. Okay, so first off, we're gonna work on the base edge. The base edge is the edge that I'm looking up on. And as you're standing on the snow surface, that's a bit, that's the part that, that really does interact with the snow right away. And so I'm looking at the base edge right now. And what I wanna do first of all, is I want to use a stone. So we're gonna use a, a 100 grit stone or what we call an extra coarse stone. And that's the way I like it. You want two stones, I think, in your toolkit. One's gonna to be extra coarse and one's gonna be fine. And that, that's the two that I want you to use throughout the season. What's really neat about our stones is they've developed a stone, Swix is, it's, it's a, I would say this is probably the seventh generation of our stones, but these stones here will, will easily glide up and down the PTEX without doing any damage to the PTEX. It was very important. So it's a, it's a really nice uh, uh, piece of equipment. And again, we sell these economy or we sell them in, in the race edition. And, the, and the, the, the more expensive ones do tend to last quite a bit longer, especially if you're doing a lot of skis. I'd highly recommend that. In the end, you're gonna save money. We have a couple different, uh, uh, these are a, a base edge file guide and or stone guide. And this base edge stone guide is awesome because two things, it's got this uh, really nice uh, a, a, a screw clamp here. So it really takes away all the fuss. You just, you just slide your stone in and you just clamp it down. This is a high grade aluminum with these two really nice chrome or steel nubs here that r protect the, the edge as you're sliding this apparatus up and down the ski. When I'm working on a ski, I, I always want to be in a position where I'm pulling towards me. That's, that's the most effective way for precision and to allow for good pressure control on the edge itself. Again, the edge I'm working on is the one I'm looking at. When I work on this, this I start with a really nice clean stone and there's a, there's a little bit of uh, oil base on there so it just does a nice job cutting. So pulling towards me. I've got the, the center of the ski clamp, so it's nice and stable. And with this stone, I can actually put pressure both ways. I don't have to release pressure, so I can work it less. So, there you can hear that burr that I was talking about. Okay, well that's one down. So you can see the remnants of that little bit of edge on there. And I'm gonna continue that. Rather than clean the stone right away, I'm just gonna move it forward a little bit. Saves a little time. So there you go. Nice clean part of the stone. And I'll just, one more pass.
All right, so now I'm going to get to filing the base edge. Um, believe it or not, <laughs> filing the base edge is really is as simple as stoning the base edge. But I'm not really a proponent, especially the younger racers out there, to do a lot of base edge filing. I find it uh, not necessary. I, I work with that coarse stone primarily, and then I usually always go straight to side while file or stoning and filing. And I will, I will do that um, more often than not, but I do want to show you how to base edge file. So this is the file that I use for everything. It's called a second cut file. It's a 200 millimeters long and it's 16 teeth per, per centimeter. So it's a, it's a well-made file. Um, being chrome, it helps a lot. You can see I keep it in that protective case all the time. Uh, but being chrome, it, uh, it's, it reduces any rusting and it does keep the life of that, the sharpness of this file. Uh, when I am working with this file, anytime I'm gonna clean it, I'm actually gonna use a, a, it's a soft bristle brass brush. It works very well to clean out any of the, the, uh, the remnants from the, from the steel edges or you can get some P-Tex in there and that kind of thing. So you really wanna make sure uh, a soft uh, uh, bristle only. And you use this file uh, the same way you did with the stone. What I love about the Swix files is that <laughs> it has an arrow pointing which direction it actually cuts in. Uh, for whatever reason, that really helps me uh, as, as I tend to forget things once in a while, but here we go. So same idea, I'm gonna place that, that file and the base edge file guide that we used with the stone. But now this time we have a we have a file in there, and this is my 0.5 base edge file guide. So I'm gonna pull, this time as I'm pulling towards me, I'm gonna pull, but I'm not gonna put pressure going back. That's the last thing you wanna do. You just wanna keep the pressure coming towards you now. So again, that, that position where I'm pulling towards me, release pressure towards, towards. And this file is really cutting well. And you'll see all the, the file, the filings that come off this steel edge when I'm finished. Wow. Now, really important here, I didn't, wasn't so important with the stone, but every time I file, I clean. And I clean in the direction of the teeth, so they're lined up that way. That's the way I clean them, and I just try to get that all out of there. Same, same with when I'm filing. I never leave any debris on the base. So one pass, I always sweep that off because I don't want to do anything to scar that beautiful ski that I have. So I just want to keep all those filings or any dirt or anything like that just off that ski. I did a uh, coarse stone edge on the base. That was my prep. And then I did a, a file, base file on my base. And now I'm gonna, I'm, I still have to come back to the base, but I'm gonna turn the ski upright and we're gonna work on the sidewall. So with this, when you flip your ski up, you always wanna make sure that the bases are away from you, bindings towards you. And now we're gonna secure the this, the vices here at the ends. And so again, from the visual aspect here, there's a couple things that I wanna do. I'm gonna just look to make sure that there's no rust or anything. And I always like to try to feel the top sheet to make sure this is all nice and smooth, just to try to figure out what, you're, what you have to deal with. Going back to my, my coarse stone, as Swix we have a, a variety of base cleaner, but I just, I use a base cleaner just to get all the, any of the dirt off the stone, just keep it nice and clean. And then I'm going now using my, it's a World Cup file guide. Now this is a, a beautiful file guide. We do have many file guides. We have them from the most beginner basic to, uh, uh, to a, a high grade aluminum to this one, which is a full steel side edge file guide. Thank you. Um, this is a great thing because it's a nice chrome piece here. When I slide that up and down the, the base of the ski, it's not gonna do anything to uh, scar up that, that really beautiful structure on there. And, but I do always feel that file guide 
sometimes you throw it in your toolkit, it could get chipped and cause a little burr or something. I just always want to make sure that there, there's nothing here that's going to scar that base when I'm rubbing it up and down the ski. I've had this file guide for years. I, I did pay a good, good dollar for it, but it's never going to let me down. Unless I lose it, I'm never going to need another one. When, they, when I use a file now, it's so simple here. So I just basically place a, a clean a clean stone, sorry, not a file. I place a clean stone on this file guide like so. And then I place it on, on the file guide like that. At the beginning of, the, of, of my wax session, I told you when I set up my equipment and I looked at my ski, that our, my bases were set at 0 0.5. My sidewall is set at 87. And I'm not going to change that. That's my desired uh, uh, base bevel and my desired sidewall bevel. So you can see here, I am using an 87 degree file guide, or some people will refer to it as a three degree file guide. Again, easy to do. Just clip that on and can just push it in place. See all this stuff I need practice now. So it has to be perfect, obviously. It, please, yeah, yeah, yeah. it has to be well with with this with this tool it is perfect it's just so easy um just so simple i like it because you're not using a lot of screws or anything like that and i like steel because it is set to that 87 we know it all right from this position here again i'm, I'm doing that i'm pulling towards me now as i pull towards me i'm i'm already not really liking what I hear because I'm, I'm, I don't really feel like my stone is really grabbing any edge here. Um, it's really rubbing on that on that sidewall protection here. So that's that TPU plastic, really hard density plastic here with that little bit of titanium just above the edge. So knowing that I'm, I'm not getting a lot, you can see the white on that stone. So it's a white sidewall. So therefore you're gonna see white on the on the stone I I'm not if I'm not getting to the edge there's a problem here and this is where it's a fundamental problem because what a lot of people in the beginner people do is they they tend to to manipulate the file guide so that they are getting edge which would take it out of that 87 degree we, we, it's not a very good thing to do so what we want is we want a sidewall cutter we want to remove some of that titanium and some of that sidewall protector the white area here but not all of it we want to do it in harmony so in this, I, I, this is one area where I, I push uh, away from me, not towards me. Um, it's just because I, I'm trying to get this to peel off. And I also want to look down here just to make sure that I'm getting a nice little coil. I have, a, this is our race edge, our race uh, sidewall remover. And I do have the option to, to try to just fine tune that. In this case, I want to pull this titanium blade into into that ski a little bit more because I want to grab a bit more of that titanium. So in one fell swoop I should get a nice clean look at that. That's important to see because what happens is some people will just or some sometimes you will try to remove this um, this protection here and you end up chipping away at the sidewall and I don't want that I want a nice smooth feel so we we want to just really just try to cleanly take off some of that now I'm gonna use this coarse stone on my sidewall it's 87 degrees I have an 87 degree file guide firmly in place with my clamp and I'm gonna pull towards me but now with this fresh new edge um, that I just cleaned some of that, some of that sidewall off with the sidewall cutter, exposing the edge to the stone. Remember, I said it's got to work in harmony, so that's a much better way of doing it, um, rather than just trying to brute strength trying to get that stone to work on the edge and perhaps take it out of the. The, the desired degree. All right, so uh, I just want to uh, clarify one thing about stoning, and hopefully, uh, hopefully this makes sense to you. So by using the coarse stone, what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to remove any burrs that are on the edge. That's number one. And I'm going to also soften up the edge. That's number two. So no, regardless if I was on the base edge or the side edge, the primary goal is to re remove burrs and soften up the edge. So you just kind of take that case hardening down. The edges are quite hard. And that, what that does is it actually saves the life of your file. So you're not using your file to do that. Um, the file should just be cutting prepped steel, which with a coarse stone, that's what you accomplish. So just like I did with the base edge file guide, I'm working with the side edge file guide. Just like I did with the stone, I'm going to place that file, same file as I used on the base edge. It's a second cut file. And I'm going to clamp that on like so. I always put it on a bit of an angle. That way the, the filings do fall out this hole that's on there. And again, just check that the, the plate here to make sure that there's no dirt or debris on there. Uh, placing the file here. I do the side edge in, in uh, two to three passes. You don't have to do more than that. The first pass I do what we call, it's basically a, a three inch overlay. So really firm, shorter strokes. Okay, got a lot of file off there, which is good. I'm going to take that file. You see all the filings that came off that, that time? And now clean the file off, clean the ski off, make sure there's no filings on that sidewall whatsoever. Clamp it back up. Now my pass is going to be a little, little longer. So let's say a six inch overlay. You don't have to muscle this, the file should be doing the cutting. But just again, make sure the pressures as I pull and release as you go that way. All right, now we're gonna do one more pass. This side's clean, so I'm just turning it over. But this ski's gonna have some debris on it, so just make sure that's all gone. And just here, we're gonna just do a nice clean Last one, perfect. Word of advice, when you, if, you're, if you don't feel you have the confidence to work on a pair of skis, just grab your oldest pair of skis and work with those first. And just, you know, like that's a, you know, a ski that you know it's getting ready to, uh, to get handed down or something that you could actually keep and actually really practice on, that, that really helps. All right, I'm going back to the base edge now. Remember I said that we, we weren't done. Now that I've finished up with the filing on the sidewall, uh, there's one thing that I did here. So um, looking at this edge, that's the one that I prepped first. You saw me prep with the coarse stone, then with the file. Then I went to my sidewall. I prepped the sidewall with the coarse stone, and then I used the file. But now what I've done is I've actually created a little bit of a microscopic burr here on the on the ski on the on the, the actual edge that I'm looking at. So that's a base edge, and I want to go back to that and just clean that off. So with a clean stone. I'm using a 400 grit or a medium stone. You can go from medium and then to fine. That's actually uh, 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 what I do when I'm actually doing a really uh, uh, a real detailed tune. But what this stone's going to do that the core stone uh, didn't do, this is actually now gonna clean up that microscopic burr and it's gonna harden that edge again. So we wanna use this as a, as a way to harden that edge. I'm gonna uh, plant this stone just the same way I did, you saw me before, so it's pulling towards me now. And this time, I'm really gonna apply some good pressure, working that edge towards me and away from me. And it really cleaned this, this ski up. What I'm looking at now is I'm looking at a consistently shiny edge all the way down. Okay, so now I'm finished that base edge with a, with a medium 400 grit stone. I'm gonna take that stone, clean it off, make sure that the base and the sidewall is clean from any files or any debris. Now I can place that stone 
on my sidewall file guide clamp it in just like you saw me do with the core stone and with the file place it on my ski and same idea now I'm going to work that ski pulling towards me and pushing away from me I'm going to apply equal pressure with a good amount of elbow grease but that ski looks really good you can do the old nail test I used to do that all year long and I would run out of fingernail so finishing off here we have three stones that we use for and they're called soft stones and they're these are really good um, I, I, I just primarily use a soft stone but we have a medium and a hard stone and I do actually use those quite a bit this soft stone right now after I've done that all that work core stoning filing base and sidewall and then finishing off with that fine stone uh, to make to make this edge nice and hard and shiny and sharp. Now that that whole process made these the, the, the edge is not only sharp but it's going to last longer because it's a hard edge. What some people like to do, I personally don't like to do this, but what they like to do is they'll go from a contact point to anywhere from three to six to eight inches back and use a soft stone to detune it as well on the tail there's this little pronounced contact point here we'll detune that a little bit where that works is for younger athletes that have little gross motor skills that aren't quite as refined and it's kind of nice to do that and that sometimes avoids hooking tips things like that so what I'm, I'll just show you how it's done uh, what happens is by using a soft stone here you're not doing any damage to the edge you're just basically taking that real sharpness out of there so you just hold it bluntly on the, the steel edge and just rub it up and down like so there's ceramic in these stones so they do a really good job of just dulling that off and that's for me that would be about as far as I'd ever want to do and then on the back here as well these stones are also really good if you bring your skis home and you notice that there's some rust on the sidewall they do a great job of cleaning up that top sheet there's a there's actually a little edge here too um, and they'll get rid of any roughness there they'll take off the rust and I all I always finish off just trying to work that top sheet with these that ceramic will actually clean up that nicely so all that is nice and smooth to feel because when you're skiing, the skis are up on edge probably more than they're flat. And that's got to be fast too. So you want that nice and clean, nice and flat. If there's any roughness here, it's slow. So keep it nice and smooth and these can really help. Okay, now I'm going to introduce my Swix Evo Pro Edger. So everything I, I, I used here can be done with one tool. I do still finesse it a little bit using my stones, but now what I have eliminated, you don't see here, I don't have a file. So this is going to become my file. The Swix Evo Edger, they developed it, the, the World Cup tuners developed it. The number one thing they wanted was something that they could hold in their hands. And by, by doing that, they also wanted it to be, to mimic, um, you know, very close to what they're using manually uh, without the electric component. It's got, um, uh, it's set at 87 degrees, but I can do that from 90 to 85. So just by turning the switch like so, um, I can take take it and put it to whatever degree I want. What I really love about this, it opens up, exposing the stone. This is on a spring, so at no time can this damage your sidewall. It's really good because that's that's basically eliminating any um, uh, rigidness to it. So it's always going to be really easy on the sidewall. And I like the fact that they place chrome here. So again, like rubbing up and down your P-Tex, it's not gonna, not gonna do anything. This stone, very simple to uh, just turn it out like that. Uh, I'm working with a fine stone, which is what it comes with, but you can start with an extra coarse, um, a medium, fine, and extra fine. The extra fine is extra good because it really gets the uh, edges nice and, nice and hard. Not just sharp, but hard. And you can use 
those just like I did the sequence here you could start with a coarse stone and then finish with a fine and that would take off a little bit more material and uh, and sometimes you might have to do that the stone runs at such high revolution it will spit out the de debris I don't want that in my eyes and I don't want to breathe that stuff in so use a respirator Okay, so finishing finishing that off, I, I will I I do like to finesse it a little bit afterwards. And the two things I like to do, just and it doesn't take much. I just I just do a little pass here with my fine stone. Just clean it right off. That's done. And then more importantly, just, just to make sure that I didn't create that that little foil, I I would always want to make sure that. I'm going to just clean off that base edge. Sweet. Okay, that's done. Okay, all right. So we've done sharpening the ski. Uh, now we're going to look at the base of the ski itself. We're going to do a, a, an initial brushing of the ski, and I do like to work with some coarse fiber text on the PTEX or on the structure itself. So imagine a structure like this. There's peaks and there's valleys. And the idea of, of a structure on a ski is to actually break up the friction between the ski surface and the snow. So instead of being like a flat piece of, of uh, P-Tex, it's gonna, it's gonna have something to break up that friction. Very, very important. And, but what can happen over time is that we can get little uh, superficial scars on that, on that structure. And we can also get some dirt buildup and things like that. So we do wanna uh, get rid of um, any of that. As far as using base cleaners on, I, I'm not a big proponent with that, although we do make some really good base cleaners. I use my base cleaners more for cleaning up my tools and cleaning up my wax, uh, uh, my wax bench and things like that. Um, however, I use our wax to clean my skis, so we'll get to that. But what we want to do, first of all, I'm, I'm using a, a brush. Uh, it's my go-to brush. It's a World Cup steel brush, um, high bristles. It's um, steel on the inside encased with a nylon on the outside i've had this brush for many many years uh, big trick with your brushes over the season they do get dirty and i use uh, a dishwashing uh, uh, soap to to clean those out and uh, it works really really well um, but i do like to keep my brushes clean and i also like to pass my brushes in one direction and one direction only so i i do draw a little arrow on it funny enough a lot of our brushes come with the arrow already in there for you so uh it's uh this is old school this is the new school from this point i'm gonna i'm actually gonna only work tip to tail so from a visual perspective uh, tip uh, working tip to tail that's my objective is just to line that structure up with the way it's intended and in this way we're going downhill so the first thing that goes downhill is the tip um, so working with that arrow perspective, what I like to do is I like to start to clean that ski out. And so this technique is actually called freshening. And that makes sense because you've got a structure and that structure is laid in the ski by the manufacturer. Typically it is the fastest structure of the day or of the season. Um, that's the intent we want good fast skis but we also want that structure to pop and so the faster you want to go the more you're going to freshen that ski and it's it's a lot of work it's a lot of elbow grease but we can really take that to the next level really cleaning that that structure out and you can see the the dirt fragments i'm getting out of there there's a, the biggest culprit for dirt in your skis is actually comes from people's hands the skis are on the rack in a ski shop if they don't have cellophane on them they get a lot of hand grease on the ski so you want to just make sure that we start with a nice freshened base if this was pre-race I'd go on for another five to six passes just like that another trick I like to do especially with brand new skis 
that structure that that's laid in there, those peaks are relatively sharp, so they're pretty crisp. Um, and I use a clean, and uh, it Swix, we, this is a 3M product, but this comes pre-washed. So there's no dust, no, no dirt in there. Um, it's a nice clean piece of P-Tex, and this is a coarse fabric. So what I like to do is I like to take that and take those peaks that are sharp and just dull them off a little bit. That way the ski pivots and it glides much faster. I use my brush for this. I put my brush on top of that and I just, just scrub it up a little bit. So we, we're, we now have a, a ski that's freshened. So I used a, a, a really nice steel brush, World Cup steel brush to freshen that base and really make that structure pop. Then I use some coarse fiber text to try to just take the sharpness off that P-Tex and further clean that base. So right now I'm looking at kind of a clean base. In my standards, it's not clean enough. And for that, I have, uh, again, something that uh, resonated from the World Cup technicians. At the time, we had six different formulas for waxes. And so we started at a, um, a, a 10, which was uh, excessively warm. And we went, we went 10, 8, 7, 6, 5, and 4. So we had six uh, formulas of waxes. The World Cup guys wanted something that they could work with every day and not have to go through a f that, those many formulas. And so we narrowed it down to three. And this is, uh, this is base prep work for sure. But I like uh, people here where, where we are in, in, uh, in, um, in, in Western Canada. I like people to work with this as a as a glorified uh, a universal wax and really great for training and it keeps things really simple for people and when it comes time for competition then I bring in the formula waxes so we can talk about that later uh, later on um, but coming into the the one thing I said primarily when I clean my skis doing the freshening is I don't like to use base cleaners on my p-tex I like to use wax to clean my skis so right now I'm going to take uh, our BP99, which is a warm wax. We use this wax for, for quite a few reasons, but the, the key thing here, on every wax we sell, there's a little iron at the bottom of the case. And on that, it'll tell you what degree, and in this case, it's 110 Celsius, to, uh, to, to melt this wax. Each wax that we sell, and why they're, they're, they're I think they're special, is because they come, at, with certain densities that's the magic here so we create a wax a paraffin wax in its purest form and we create in this case it's a warm wax so it's soft they both need different temperatures to melt that wax on the 110 degrees is our lowest uh, melting temperature wax and it's great for new skis that aren't used to taking hot waxes so basically i know it's it sounds uh a little strange, but we're almost training our bases to accept a hotter iron. I think the primary focus here, or what we try, want to try to achieve to create a fast ski, is not uh, have to irons that are too hot on the ski for too long a time. We want to make sure that we're melting the, the paraffin wax into the bases without really overheating the ski. So in this case, I'm starting with a, a, a waxing iron, and if you can see here, this is a, a digital waxing iron, and I have uh, two buttons here, one up, one down. So as you can see, I can go up or I can go down with precision. So I'm at 110 right now. The second thing I do here is I, I clean that iron before I do anything because I, I might have had other waxes on that iron. I just want to make sure that there's also no dirt on the iron so that looks perfectly clean before I do anything. Next off, I start, I hold the iron nice and close to the base and I just do a little bit of a pool there and run my iron. Slow enough that I'm getting a drip line down one side and I bring it back to the other side. By doing that, when I go to set my iron down on the ski, it's going to be set on wax, not on P-Tex. 
So as I start to iron, again, my iron's at 110 degrees. I just first pass, I just want to make sure that this is going to be applied tip to tail. I don't take any shortcuts. I make sure it's right through the shovel, tip to tail and edge to edge. The other thing I did is I released the center vise because I'm going to allow that ski to warm up and actually produce a, a reverse camber. I use a five mil scraper. So this is a plexiglass scraper at five mil. I always use a plexiglass scraper sharpener. And then I fix the, the center piece. So while that, this, this wax, while it was still warm and workable, I'm now going to with a sharp plexiglass scra scraper, I can get a lot of that off. Now, do you see the dirt in that wax? So we had that warm wax we already established. We're using that for cleaning the ski and, um, and making sure that it's gonna saturate the base so we have a nice uh, um, low temperature melt wax in the ski before we start. Next, I have an option here. So uh, this BP88, it's a uh, it's a good wax. It's uh, I like it for uh, for fresh snow. It's a uh, zero to plus, uh, minus ten in temperature. Uh, that's air temp, by the way. Um, coming here uh, into the colder wax, it'll be good for anything colder than that. And so it's pretty simple, right? You don't have to uh, no rocket science. I think people get too worked uh, worked up about the temperature of waxes. For me, where we ski. I want the hardest wax possible on my skis because I want a ski that I can ski on all day and know the wax is resilient and it'll be there from, from the end of the day. So most of the time we're skiing on man-made surface. And at this time of the year, like a lot of people are skiing glacier and, and that's even coarser. So we want the hardest wax possible. Forget what the temperature says. Hard wax is really good for our, our area. So with the cold wax, uh, now you can see here that I have to go up to a, a 100. 35 degrees Celsius. I also want to po uh, point out our our uh, beautiful uh, uh, green stamp on all our cases now, knowing that we have a biodegradable wax for you. And now we're going to go back to our my iron uh, at 135 degrees. The reason why it's 135 degrees because this is a harder brick of wax. That's the density is harder. You can see I'm up there, and you can see now that the the iron's smoking a little bit, but that's from the previous wax. So the harder wax is going to take a little bit longer to get into the ski. Good habit to get into when you're done this part of your, your uh, session. Always unplug your iron right away. Start to let it cool down. This uh, ski, we're going to let it sit. And you can see it's in liquid form right now. So that's your, your waxing 101. Now we'll get back to scraping, base, sidewall, and then more brushing. I have a ski that's the wax is set. It's hard on the surface and it's not in a really gummy state. So I can now I can work with it. Again, going back to my, I uh, want to talk about the plexiglass scrapers. We do have them in three mil, four mil, five mil. My reason for using a five mil is just because they, they don't bend. They, they're just, and they, they tend to last a little longer. And I can always feel whether or not this is a flat surface too. So I, I don't like to, um, to over scrape as well, but if you have a sharp scraper, it eliminates, especially with the harder waxes, it eliminates so much work. So again, working in a tip to tail manner, I do have to tighten up my ski again, make sure it's nice and st uh, stable on the, on the table. And just working towards my, my beautiful little trash can at the end there. I, try, I like to use a trash can simply because I just don't like to clean up too much after. But you can see how easy that was to come off and then right into your trash can. If you don't have the, the bag at the end, you can just put an actual trash can at the bottom of your table. So taking my scraper, knowing that it's sharp, and just getting off the surface wax 
I don't want to overdo it here. I just want to take off enough wax so that I can work with my brush and let the brush take off the rest for as much as I want. Coming towards the end of the ski, I've, uh, I'll tell you that the wax tends to accumulate both at the tip and tail. So just spend a little extra time just making sure that that's all taken care of and nice and clean. So that'd be as much scraping as I do for the base. This is actually works out pretty good for the video to show you that excessive wax does end up on your sidewall. And that's not fast in any way, shape or form. So now I'm gonna go back to my scraper. I don't like the scrapers that have that little notch in there that some people will run like that because you just end up dulling your, your edges again. So this scraper, I wanna scrape the sidewall, not the edge itself, the sidewall. So I'm gonna start again up here and uh, just really carefully trying to take off some of that wax and knowing that I'm holding it away from the sharp part of that edge, just only on the side surface. And that does a really good job. Okay, so after I cleaned the sidewall with my, with my scraper, again, I didn't want to really touch the edges too much. So uh, I wanted to use uh, Fibertex on, on the sidewall. And I want just basically, it, it is a pot scrubber. And just basically what I'm trying to do is trying to scrub that wax off the sidewall so that we can run a, a nice clean sidewall. So again, I'm just gonna try to avoid being blunt on the edges. I don't wanna do that. I just wanna kind of just stay on the side of that edge and uh, work that. Even if I get some, some on the plate here, or even on my bindings, I'll still use that same. And this is a medium coarse Fibertex. So you can see now I've got a really clean edge and uh, still have a sharp edge but now it's clean right the whole sidewall so that's an important thing to do once we've we've established that we've we've cleaned the sidewall free of wax we've done that initial scrape uh, we've gotten rid of all the the excess debris i'm now going to use my my brushes to uh, texture the wax to the structure of the ski so in other words the wax shouldn't lay on top of the, the structure just like a blanket. It should be brushed out so that the depths of the structure are exposed. So we just want that structure to come back and pop. And uh, we're going to make this ski pretty fast this way. Um, same idea. Now I'm going to, because my last wax was a hard wax, the first thing I want to use is a bristle that's hard. So I have two bristles here. I have a, a stiff nylon with the short bristles it's an excellent brush and as a matter of fact if there's only one brush i ever got that would be the brush i would get a stiff nylon it's just a, a good brush because it does do a lot of work but they if you're only using that one brush they won't last long um, but a nice uh, coarse brass brush um, which is stiff it's really great for this harder wax because it, it will take a, a little less work to to uh to get the wax to texture so same idea here i'm going to go tip to tail and this time you'll see the technique i'm really pushing the nose of the brush in and just flicking it towards that trash can with the heel of the brush now as i prep the ski and freshen by brushing this time by brushing for the texture or texturing the wax i'm going to brush quite a bit more the faster you want to go the more you'll brush. And it's funny how as an old coach, I, I could tell if there were shortcuts taken. One, I would see wax on the sidewalls. Two, as I was brushing the ski on the hill, let's say, I would see more wax coming out. And so, not acceptable. <laughs> we gotta get them really well brushed. So, I can keep going here. I would probably go for a race prep. I would go at least 10 to 12 passes just like I did. It, again, it's a lot of elbow grease. And uh, we'll just finish off with one more. So in harmony with the brass brush then, that took off all the, the real bulk uh, wax. So it really did a good job of the texturing. And so with the nylon brush, I just like to finish because I just find it it pulls a little bit more wax out. And you actually, 
you'll have a different feel with this brush. Really important to know that these brushes are only used for wax. They're never used before to do any uh, uh, freshening. They're only used for texturing the wax. Again, back to that trick of mine. When you want to clean these brushes, you can see that there's a lot of dirt. Um, this isn't dirt, sorry, this is paraffin and it's in a dry state. And you can clean these effectively with hot water and dish soap.